So your boy's feeling hella flat. So you already know, I gotta go cop some pre-workout. I'm gonna try to finesse, get the shit for free. You already know, I don't like to buy my pre, I like to get that shit for free. Just get that tattooed. <laughs> Bro, yeah, I should get that tattooed. I didn't even mean to say that. <laughs> Bro, I just all of a sudden feel cool as fuck. Fucking YouTube this shit. Oh, I don't care. Fuck yeah. <laughs> what do you think's like the best stuff in here? Well, I don't know what, well. 5150, I heard that shit's pretty good. Yeah, have you tried it yet? No. Fuck, like Ruthless or Batch? Ruthless or Batch? I'll grab Batch. There you go. Alright boys, you guys already know what time it is. Free worker has been quiet. Alright boys, you guys already know what time it is. We're gonna cheers the shit up. Dude, I thought it was really smooth. Dude, I'm gonna eat them all on you if you don't get here quick. Some nasty shit. Everyone has touched this. Can you like focus this on how dirty this is? Holy shit, dude. Looks like I just got back from a fucking Playboy Mansion party and snorted lines off a bunch of Playboy bunnies asses, bro. <laughs> yeah, my boy Hugh just called me up from the grave, dude. Everybody got some peace, you. Hey, you have this. What is that shit, bro? What's up? Yo, yeah, what's going on? In the blink of an eye, you realize that there's so much more to the book than the page you were stuck on. Finally, you will be free to live a life you love living instead of the life you think other people want you to live. Remember, you are the highest authority when it comes to knowing what you want and what you love. So stop trading yourself for the approval from others. Ladies and gentlemen, weirdos and geeks, please repeat after me. I don't give a fuck. What? I told Zane to itch his face because he's fucking dying off a career right now, and that's what he pulls. <laughs> It up for the boys, gave us some of these. I don't know what they are, carbolins, whatever. This one's got even more stims in it, bro. So, not only am I on 5150 and bash 27, like two scoops of that shit each, that's basically enough to put down an elephant for a tire week. On top of that, we got carbolins. So, I don't know, I'm probably just gonna sip on this shit in between the workouts. I want to get some crazy bench press sets for you guys. So, you guys, right now, I'm gonna need all the energy I possibly need and can attain in this little five foot nine body of mine. down below we're gonna hit this for sets of two leading up to my top set i want you guys to comment down below where you think this rp is going to be so how fast and how easy are you gonna hit this Number one, so that's pretty fast. Come on, Zane. No more. Come on. No more. Come on. 
Proudly and proudly. Dude. You weren't lying, bro. Bro, sub RPE, dude. Wow. I'm so proud of you. I remember when you couldn't even bench the bar. All right, boys. So finally, top sets here, and I'm leading to believe I might go for. Well, right now I'm gonna put on 335. See how that feels. Uh, with just like wrist straps, and I'm gonna put on my raw gear sleeves, my raw gear elbow sleeves that increase your bench press by about 50 pounds. So we'll, I'm basically gonna try to hit like 345, 355 for my top sets probably. Wish me luck, this is fucking heavy. I didn't know if I had to fucking. I wanted, I wanted to test Zane's uh, strength and squatting <laughs> capabilities so that next time something like that happens, I don't have to call over and <laughs> him to catch that spot for me. All right, that's a little update here. I kind of bit off a little bit more than that guy. <laughs> I just blew so many brain cells I can't even talk straight, but a guy kind of bit off a little bit more than he could chew on that set, so I'm gonna back down a little bit because I kind of want to leave. It was supposed to be RP9. I'll be honest, my ego took the fuck over there, so I gotta kind of take a step back. I'm gonna probably throw 315 on, see how that runs, so I can leave just a little bit of fuel left. Bleh, so I can leave a bit of fuel left in the tank. Progress for our workout because we're gonna be working on a lot of hypertrophy, lots of reps, gross pumps, blood just everywhere. It's a little unfortunate, I'm not gonna lie, but I can tell you this: first time benching in a very long time, I am not upset. This, this is this is okay. It's decent. Come on, Easy. come on, Carter. Rocky, bro. Fucking simple shit. <laughs> oh, I thought you slapped him in the face. I don't really know any motivation words, but <laughs> if Dan can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. Look at this kid bench this shit, dude. Uh, wow. You know what, Zane? If I was gay, I would, I would, I, I'm, I'm straight and I would still kiss you, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. You ready to do another set of throws, bro? I'm excited. New PR or what? Uh, no. <laughs> How is that not a PR? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, curling sesh, I told it to you, bro. <laughs> Dude, I'm shot. <laughs> Just 
struck a light bulb in my mind, bro. <laughs> Dude, homies share everything, bro. We even share fucking condoms. Yeah, I guess so. Alright, so you ready? Come pick this up. because mine are bigger. <laughs> yeah. Every time I work out with Zane, it makes me feel like I don't even fucking lift. I feel like I'm back in my 13-year-old days doing CrossFit and shit. <laughs>
fucking bad, dude. Oh. Oh. Alright boys, so this definitely concludes the end of the workout. We got a fucking crazy pump. I haven't hit this kind of like volume and hypertrophy in a very long time. Bench felt really good. Incline press felt really good. Both flies felt fucking immaculate. I can't complain dude. Everything's feeling amazing. Considering I'm on a very low dose on my cruise right now on test. So I'm going to open up about this kind of shit later on in the video. So hope you guys enjoyed the workout. Uh, else to say man i uh, hope you guys use this workout as motivation to fuel your next one better yourselves day by day to become a fucking champion in the future all right all right so what's going on everybody this is the part of the video that everybody's been waiting for so the first thing I want to say and get out there and make clear to everybody is no, I haven't been hiding the truth because I'm afraid to tell you guys. I'm going to give you guys literally the one reason and the only reason. And that's literally because my entire social media audience is based towards like a younger generation. All right. Why in the right mind of me would I promote <laughs> my decision onto other people? So with that being said, I feel like I'm at that age now, I'm 18 years old. I turned 19 July 16th uh, this year, obviously. And I felt like it was time to finally say it, dude. So I wanna open up completely about obviously like my use, my experience, uh, why I got into it, how I got into it, why I just don't promote it and why I don't feel the need I should promote it other than like right now, obviously. So like, I wanna get the word out there because I don't wanna lead anybody in the wrong direction and I don't wanna mislead anybody saying like, oh, you can achieve this naturally and oh, I've achieved this naturally and blah, 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 blah. Like, I will show you guys what I achieve naturally. Like I have nothing to hide, bro. I genuinely do not give a fuck who says it's a good idea and who says it's a bad idea. Obviously I'm open. You know, if someone wanted to educate me a little bit more on this kind of shit, because in reality I am new to this and I'm not perfect. Like I'm not, I'm not a genius. I don't know everything that I'm talking about. And honestly, there's a complete possibility that I got my information from the wrong source and that could have misled me into doing the wrong things and et cetera, et cetera. So everything comes down to a choice in life. My choice is going to be completely separate from your choice. Jimmy's choice is going to be completely separate from my choice. That's why I do not necessarily talk about this kind of shit often because in reality I am 18 years old, you know, and <laughs> you know, man, let's just, let's just get into it. All right. So I might as well just send it. Obviously I want to start off with the reasoning behind why I decided to do what I did. And I'm going to jump into a bunch of things. Okay. I'm going to jump into what I took, why I took it and basically like my plan moving forward, uh, why I took things and what I was expecting, etc., etc. I want to show you guys, obviously like my natural growth from when I first started, because if you guys didn't know, I started when I was like 13 years old. If I'm being honest, I did start crossfitting when I was like 11, 12 years old, but I don't, I don't even want to fucking talk about that shit. That's just stupid. But <laughs> basically what made me make that choice of going against what everybody told me to do and sticking to what I want to do. All right. So this, this is, this is basically where it all starts. This is, this is it. So I wanted to make a quick disclaimer. Um, you know, whether or not the comment section is going to be filled with just absolute toxicity or not, it's fine, man. Uh, this is my decision. You know, I appreciate your guys' condolences and everything. And honestly, like it means the world to me that you guys actually care about me. So whatever you say, even if it's negative, if it's positive, obviously it all comes from the heart. Obviously it all comes from, you know, deep within. And that's just your honest opinion about me. So I appreciate you guys obviously being transparent enough to the point where like, you're not afraid of telling me off or you're not afraid of sucking my dick. I'm kidding. I don't expect any, I don't want any of you guys to suck my dick. July 13th, 2020, three days before I turned 18 years old was when I first, when I took my first, first, first injection, my decision making behind it was, it was around June. It was around June last year where I was basically like, I literally had to take a step back in life and reevaluate basically like what I want to do. Where do I want to go? How far do I want to dig into this shit? How far do I want to take my life into the bodybuilding industry? I guess you could say. And basically 
how I made this decision, you guys, was literally as simple as this. Put me into June of last year, okay? I'm looking back and I'm basically going like, all right, I'm 17 years old and my biggest goal, I shit you not, my biggest goal, and I know I can do this, man. I know I can do this. I wanna become the youngest pro in class physique. Like, it's as simple as that. I wanna be the youngest pro in class physique, the biggest contributing factor to why I wanted to do what I did is literally just, I looked back, man, the last previous years, and in reality, if I wanted to, if I want to be the best, if I wanna be the youngest pro, the amount of growth that I have basically acquired over the last few years is just it's simply not gonna. Yo, I apologize, you guys, my camera literally just died, so if things are kinda seeming like a little sus right now, it's cause I'm filming on my phone, so there you have it, there's my explanation. But as I was saying, basically I had to reassess like these last few years of progress, of growth, of muscle, literally extra contractile tissue placed onto my body. Not no water weight, not no fat weight, not no water retention, nothing along those lines. Like, I want quality, pure muscle through my dieting, through my training, et cetera, et cetera. And if I'm being honest, like I said, put myself into June last year, the amount of progress that I've acquired over the last couple of years, just it's not good enough. It's not fast enough. It's not to the point where I can literally walk on stage this year and be like, I'm going to take that pro card. It's like, no, I have to take a step back and be like, all right, if I want to be serious about this and if I want to just stop talking out of my ass, I got to figure something out. So with that being said, you guys, I'm going to give you like a complete rundown of what my first cycle is, what I was expecting out of it on top of basically like the mistakes that I made and what I can learn from those mistakes so that I can be better next time. And so that I can actually do things a little bit more properly. So I'm not just like, so I'm not, so I'm not questioning everything that I'm doing, right? Because that's, that's the biggest thing that kind of messed me up was since I'm brand new to it, all I basically knew, man, was like, all right, I want to be safe and fuck SARMs, dude. Like I am not going near SARMs. That shit is at the very bottom of my list. If I want to do this shit, bro, I'm going to just full send it and start pinning with test. All right. So my first, first, first cycle was test. <laughs> my first cycle was 250 milligrams of testosterone E, all right, test E, and I ran that for basically six weeks. So I started this cycle 19 weeks away from my show that I was supposed to be competing in on December 12th, okay? That show got canceled, so we'll get into that after. But my first cycle was 250 milligrams of test E per week and with an anti-ester. So basically what I was running for that was my Arimidex and I was doing 0.5 milligrams per week as a start. Okay, so as a start, basically I ran that shit for, it was, it was, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, I honestly forgot, man, but I'm pretty sure it was eight to nine weeks. And then after I basically did that, I got a new coach, okay? And this is where things kind of go downhill and things got a little bit sus and I started to get a little bit freaked out. And honestly, man, I appreciate the universe for like correlating with me and like aligning with what I want to do, but you literally cancel my competition in the perfect fucking time because if you didn't, I would have been on a bunch of other shit and I'm telling you guys exactly what I would have been on, why it freaked me out and what the fuck was going through my head at the time, why I did not want to do that shit. And you know, that was a big learning experience for me. So let's hop into it. What I did after about week eight, week nine of cycling, my little test cycle or whatever, just kind of dibble dabbing with it. Like bro, I, I got a new, I got a new coach. Okay. I got a new coach and we're absolutely not saying names. Cause like, that's just, I'm not that kind of guy. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus or anything like that. It's fucked up. Um, <laughs> it's not cool at all. So we were about 12, 10, 12 weeks out. Okay. And we had to make the decision. All right. What do we want to do from this point? Okay. I want to, we want to start adding certain things in. We want to start doing this and that testosterone isn't going to cut it for you. If you want to come in dick skin shredded, if you want to do this, if you want to do that, you guys know where I'm going with this. So what was the cycle that I was on and what's the cycle I'm referring to? It's going to freak you the fuck out. I'm not going to lie. What happened after I got this new coach? Well, everything got bumped up. Bunch of new shit got added in, etc., etc. So after my first cycle, this is what happened. I immediately got bumped up to 500 milligrams of testosterone E per week with one milligram of Arimidex per week, obviously. And then on top of that, I was on EQ known acetate i'm pretty sure i don't got the vial with me or anything i just referred it to as eq basically it's just in simpler terms i'm not no scientist so like these big words kind of fuck with me sometimes especially since like 
I'm very new to it. But I was on 500 milligrams of EQ per week. I was on 500 milligrams of test E per week. And I was on 0.5 milligrams of Arimidex per week. And I was on 25 milligrams of Winstrol a day. So I did that for six weeks. I believe I did that for six weeks and we had, I was doing amazing, man. I'm gonna be honest, that, that shit felt fucking amazing. Considering I have never taken anything in my life before, I had zero side effects, nothing went wrong. Like literally everything was like fucking tip top. Everything felt absolutely amazing. I don't know if it was maybe like a placebo, like my mindset was just really, really into it and I wasn't expecting anything bad to happen, so maybe that could have been it. Even though they were high doses, and basically like for my little five foot nine, 210 pound body, that's, that's quite a bit for me to uh, be doing, especially on considering it's technically my first cycle. You know, after that, so after that cycle, we were about three weeks out from show, and basically we were at a point where we were like, you know, uh, we, we, we wanna dig deeper. We wanna dig deeper and we wanna literally bring a package to the stage that is literally going to drop fucking jaws. Like literally just bleh. Shit that literally like nobody has seen in years type beat. All right, so that's that's my goal. Like that has literally been my goal. I don't, I don't succumb to average. I don't succumb to anything that people fucking think I can do. It's like, if I think I can do something and like I literally pedal to the metal believe I can do this shit, I will blow you away type beat. All right, like it's not just like a, and eh, you're moderate, you're average. It's like, no, it's gonna be like, what the fuck? Okay, so my coach, <laughs> my coach basically said, all right, this is what we're gonna do. And bro, I'm gonna be honest, I only really know what like testosterone does, bro. And like, just me even like learning about tests kind of blew me over the top. Cause it's just, it's so much shit to learn about, man. It's so much shit to learn about aside from dieting, aside from training. When you think you know everything, there's always something else that you ought to learn about. So just so much information overload on my fucking brain. I didn't really understand what I was doing. So that's a big reason why I got a coach. So he can take that little bit of stress off my back, deal with the doses, deal with my cycle and everything, just so I don't have to think about it. So I can have less cortisol level is going into show so I can come in with a tighter, leaner, better looking package. I went down the best route that I thought at the time that I could go down, if that makes sense, okay? Like if I were to run my own cycle by myself, I would honestly have no idea where to even start. So having somebody to do it for me just really, really helped and gave me that jump start, you know, and kind of really locked it into my head that like this is honestly stuff that you really need to learn about before taking it man big shout out to derek more place obviously for being like my main source of information aside from that i'm gonna tell you guys what the cycle was that freaked me out and basically why i'm very thankful uh to the point where my, my show got canceled type shit and like not a lot of people would say that so this is what was going to happen so 500 milligrams of test okay same thing test e 500 milligrams of eq 50 milligrams of Winstrol, 25 milligrams per day of Clenbuterol. I'm pretty sure it was 600 milligrams of Master E. So I was two weeks out, keep in, keep in mind I was two weeks out. I have a long genetic line of like heart attacks, heart problems, fucking organ problems, hair loss problems, like all this shit that Clen is gonna absolutely increase by about 400,000 fucking percent. Mast E is gonna, is gonna have a detriment on my heart. And it's like, I didn't really necessarily know this shit. That's, and that's why I'm really thankful my show got canceled so I didn't actually have to indulge in that shit. And that was, really, that was a really cool learning experience for me because one, it showed me, you know, you don't need a million things to come in looking absolutely crazy. Like obviously after I learned about what these things were and like all this kind of shit, I basically did a little bit of extra research on like even Mr. Olympia's fucking cycles, dude. No Mr. Olympia is taking fucking eight different things, dude. Like I have heard, I don't want to like say name, like I'm literally just cutting names of this because this is about me. I don't want to like put it on anybody else, but I literally remember listening to this on like a podcast. One of the best Mr. Olympia's was running three things on his Olympia cycle to get him to stage. Meanwhile, I'm an 18 year old kid who just started taking things, who just turned 18 years old. And you're already trying to get me on fucking four or five more things than like the top of the top are taking. That shook my fucking world, dude. That shook my world. And that really made me realize, hmm, maybe these people don't have the best interest for me. Maybe I have to take it upon myself to learn. And maybe I don't have to fucking 
Maybe I can't have somebody behind my back trying to tell me what to do because they are only in it because they want to have that saying and they want to have that. They want to be the person with the credit that basically could go around saying like, I got that kid there. I got that kid on that stage. I made him look like that. Meanwhile, in the next couple of years, bro, if you keep running me on that shit, who knows what the fuck is going to happen, dude? Like, it's just the truth. And it's like what, what he failed to realize was, bro, I made it so clear. I do not want to do crazy shit. And his main excuse was, oh, well, the guys that you're competing against are taking fucking three times the amount you're taking. I highly doubt they're taking 1500 fucking milligrams of one thing. One, maybe all of their shit combined, but not one fucking thing. So right there, you're already lying to my fucking face. Why would I trust you? So in conclusion, those are my two cycles. And that is literally all I have taken. I hope you guys listen to it. And I hope you guys possibly learn something. And I hope you guys realize it's not all fucking fruit loops and rainbows. When it comes to this shit, there are scary times. If you're doing it wrong, there are fucking you don't know what's going to happen. If you have never taken things before, your body could not respond as well as fucking Joshua's body across the street, right? He could have the most elite genetics like Ronnie fucking Coleman, and he could be taking 200 milligrams of test and just blow up like a balloon animal where you could take 500 milligrams of test and do absolutely fucking nothing. Like that does not mean it's not working for you. And that does not mean that you need to take more. It's just, you need to step back and reevaluate. Maybe my diet is off. Maybe my fucking training is not, or maybe my training is off. Maybe this is off. This is off. This is off. This is off. Steroids is not the fucking answer. And I want to get that so clear to, especially the younger generation that is watching this. You guys got to realize I make my own choices in my life. And I know you guys do too as well, but this is where I stand. I have been in this game since I was 12 years old, boys. I'm 18 turning 19 this year. That's about six to seven years of actual hard learning experience, trial and error, dieting every fucking year from that point, training every fucking year from that point and getting to a position where that is, that genuinely is what I need to do to get myself to the next level. I can't just be eating 300 more calories a week. I can't be training a little bit extra harder. Like, Bro, I'm, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys and let you guys know about my experience with it, bro. When I hopped on that test, dude, my lifts blew up like a motherfucker. My strength blew up like a motherfucker. My size blew up like a motherfucker. Dude, when I was, when I was natty, the biggest that I got to was 220 pounds, okay? I was fat. I was so fat, all right? I, dude, I was so fat to the point where like, it was borderline obese. I got my body mass index fucking, I got my body mass index tested and it literally came out to be morbidly obese that's literally just how chubby i was because <laughs> i'm such a short frame and to put that much size on as a natural person i don't know what it was bro but it just wasn't healthy and so i'm gonna be i'm gonna tell you guys like what my progress was basically from a natural to my first day of painting so i'm gonna plug up a couple pictures here show you guys my first day of lifting show you guys my last day of lifting as a natural I'm gonna show you guys my first day lifting as a as a fake natty, I guess you could say, compared to right now. So obviously you can tell there's a big difference between there. There is a huge difference between muscle maturity, muscle size, and muscle density. That's basically like the main three things that I noticed. It was obviously those aspects that basically like blew me away the most because I got to a point where, dude, at the beginning of my prep, so at the beginning of my prep, I weighed 185 pounds, okay? I didn't think, like, if I were to cut starting from that point, going to my, going to my show, I probably would have weighed 167, 168, like, stage weight or whatever. And I literally just thought about that. And I'm like, this isn't going to be enough, man. Like, holy shit. Like, considering I want to be the youngest in the world, this isn't going to cut it. So I had to really think about it hard, man. It took me about a full month to finally make that decision being like, let's fucking do this shit boys. So I did that. And basically ever since then, I've been trying to learn through trial and error and just what feels good, what makes me feel off, you know, certain foods and stuff that might make me react a little bit differently than they used to make me react, et cetera, et cetera. Like literally just fine tuning me to figure out what works for me because 
something could work for, you know, my old coach as an example. Oh, well, this works for me. And, you know, uh, this saturates my body for, or this saturates my body in two weeks, not four. And it's like, well, scientifically through fucking hundreds of studies that have been fucking literally tested, like through so many people. And this is saying that it takes four weeks. I am not going to listen to you. I am not going to literally fucking base my opinion off of yours, avoiding hundreds of other scientifically proven opinions. It's like ridiculous. That would be so, that'd be immature. I mean, it'd be, it'd be immature, it'd be closed-minded, it'd be stupid of me to even do that. So I really had to take it upon myself and ignore even what I, even the people that I first thought knew everything, I later on down the road started to realize maybe not, maybe they don't have the best interest for me. Maybe they really are only in this to get me to that level of like, holy shit, I got that kid there, rub it off in people's faces, blah, 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 blah. But like my heart starts to do some weird things. I start to lose all my hair. I start to fucking like, bro, I got nice hair, dude. I don't want to be losing my hair like that, especially at 18 years old, man. Like I have made the amount of progress that I have made naturally. What makes fucking you, (laughs) what makes you think I need all of this shit to fucking compensate for that other stuff, like, bro, I don't need that much stuff to get me to the next level. I only need a little bit. I only need enough to fucking basically get me above average with my hormone levels and shit. I don't need something that gets me to the point where I'm fucking Superman, dude. I don't need that. I can train hard enough without it. I can eat enough without it. I don't need appetite increasing whatever they're called. I don't need things that increase my appetite. I can already eat a lot. I can drink a lot of water. My mentality and the demons that have built up inside of me, those literally are enough to get me past sticking points, dude. Me having all this built up emotion, built up feeling, built up mental distress has literally driven me to fucking go crazy in life, to literally just say, fuck everybody, fuck everyone's opinions. This is what I want to do in life. How do I get there? Who do I need to do? Who do I need to avoid? Who do I need to block out? Who will help me and who will not? It's as simple as that. I want what I want because I live my own life. Jimmy doesn't live my life for me. Fucking Gordon doesn't live my life for me. Jay Cutler doesn't live my life for me. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it. And I'm not, I'm not like your average teenager. I'm not just going to be full of ego and be like, oh, fucking this is working because this has worked for that guy. And, you know, fucking this guy is telling me to take Rad 140 because it's really good for putting on size and increasing your appetite and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I don't give a fuck, dude. It's like, that's not a problem in my life. Those are not problematic enough to the point where I need to compensate for that by taking something when I can already do it. When I genuinely just need to dig deep down and fucking ask myself, how bad do you want this shit? How fucking bad do you want it compared to anybody else? I know deep down inside, I know it's on the top of my fucking head too. I live with this shit every fucking day. I want this way more than people think that I want this. Okay. I, I will die for this. I will absolutely die for this. I will die for doing what I love because if I die happy, at least I knew I chased my dreams and I chased my goals and I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish instead of dying, being all sad and sorrow, being like, I wish I did that or I regret not doing this or I wish I took that step in life. No, I want to die knowing that I pushed myself. I fucking did everything. Nope. I did everything that everybody told me I could not do. I exceeded my own expectations. I exceeded everything. I'm so proud of myself. I want that bow cry because I'm so passionate about this. But yeah, man, that's that's basically my experience with it. I hope you guys learned something from that. And I hope you guys got a little bit from it. And like I said, I just want to repeat myself one more time, you guys. This is not your calling to take that step. This is not your calling if you are a teenager, if you're an adult who is just genuinely stick to the facts. If you are genuinely not ready for this, if you are not ready to take the step with fucking steroids, peptides, SARMs, PEDs, anything along those lines, be smart. Because just like every TikTok influencer out there right now, I want to get big fast. I want to do this fast. And I want to do this fast. Bro, I've been doing this shit since 12 years old, my guy. I'm telling you this right now. There's no rush. This is, this is not a sprint, boys. This is the marathon. This is the marathon that will either make or break you, okay? If you fuck up, you fuck up good. You fuck up really good. So 
I hope you guys really, really take the time to rewatch this and really, really think about making that decision. Really go back and understand maybe there's something else you need to change instead of just implementing a bunch of steroids or SARMs or a bunch of bullshit that someone is telling you to do because they don't know what your diet is like. They don't know what your training is like. They don't know what your sleep is like. They don't know what all that stuff is like. So what do you think they're going to tell you? Oh, well, you're not growing. So the one thing that I'm going to assume you got to take is fucking Rad140 or LGD or MK677. SARMs. Stay the fuck away from SARMs, bro. If you are genuinely going to fucking make that change in your life, this is my one tip and this is my one tip only and I mean this through my absolute fucking heart. Start with test. Start with test and no, I am not saying do it. It's just that's what I would do and that's what I did. And I feel good. I feel healthy. I haven't had any bad experiences with it. I'm doing fine. I feel amazing. Nothing has changed. My acne, if anything, has cleared up like... I, I'm doing everything as cautiously and as safely as I possibly can. And I have literally disregarded so many people's opinions because like Derek has an example. I will listen to Derek about all my fucking steroid usages, usages and shit. I will listen to Derek about all my steroid usage and shit because he has the experience. It's as simple as that. Are you going to listen to that powerlifter dude who has never accomplished anything in his life who has literally just been taking shit to take it for funsies in comparison to Derek, where he was literally dedicated the last how many years specifically studying what he is studying right now with PEDs, with steroids, with the anabolic tree, with literally everything along those lines. He has dedicated his life to doing this. This is what he's good at. Just like I am good at training, I am good at doing what I'm good at doing because I have put in the time for it. I have put in the hours for it. I have dedicated everything for this. I have eliminated my distractions. I have eliminated party time. I have eliminated hanging out with friends to work out, to eat my meals, to do everything I want to fucking do that everybody tells me is a fucking mistake. I'm going to be a failure. I am losing all my friends and I'm losing family and I am losing the people in my life that care about me for what? For me to achieve my goals. But you got to realize this. I do not want to listen to people who are not in a position I want to be in. Why would I listen to you, store clerk, if I want to be Mr. Olympia and you're trying to give me cycle advice? Bullshit. I'm not going to. It's as simple as that. So take your safety precautions. Do your research and don't be a retard and don't listen to everybody that has an opinion because everybody has an opinion just like everyone has an asshole. And it's the, it is literally the truth, bro. That is literally the closest thing to the truth. Everyone will have an opinion, whether it's based off an emotional state, a statistical state, a factual state, there will be an opinion. And 99.9% .9 of people that you actually meet literally form their shit off of an emotional opinion, an emotional standpoint. When you get into an argument with someone, literally take this, take this into consideration right now. When you get into an argument with someone and they start to get heated up and they start to get mad, angry, and you're literally just chill, chilling there like, no, I know my shit. Like I'm literally like nothing's controlling me other than like facts and stats and everything. This motherfucker is like about to cry, dude. You're like saying some shit that he's like, no, this is, no, this is it. Because he is forming his opinion based on his emotional state. He does not want you to be right. It's ego. It's fucking, it's literally all ego and it's all a bunch of bullshit. And it's literally all just, it's built up off of an emotional state. And you got to realize you are literally just talking about pure nonsense when you get to that point. So that's why when you get into that position, when you're arguing through emotion, take a step back and reevaluate what you're about to say because you could fuck up on something and you could say something you genuinely just don't mean. That's why so many parents, so many divorces happen because they always argue over an emotional standpoint. What do you think is going to happen? A bunch of bullshit. Emotion versus emotion, negative emotion versus negative emotion is not going to turn into a positive. I promise you that. I promise you. Get on the same page. Figure your shit out. Stop arguing over an emotional state of mind because that's not going to go anywhere. You are going to ruin relationships. You are going to destroy love. You are going to miss the only important point and that is factual evidence, not emotional. You don't argue through emotion. And that's what so many people I see build their opinion backslash bias off of is emotion. Erase that, especially when you're in arguments. Erase that. Seriously, it does not lead to anywhere good. So I hope you guys learned something from that. I might not be Albert Einstein. I might not be a genius, but I definitely have gotten to where I've gotten to right now by doing the actions I have taken, thinking the way I think and having the mentality I have right now. So 
I don't plan on stopping. I only plan on getting better from here. And I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your days, obviously, to listen to me talk. And hopefully you learned something from that, man. Seriously, steroids is not the answer. And there is not always just one answer. Figure out what's going on. Figure out your answers. Figure out what you need to change before you make that decision and saying, I need steroids. I need SARMs. Because I promise you, that's probably the very last fucking thing you need. Like, unless you are someone like Isaiah with like the very lowest testosterone levels in the entire world, I honestly don't even think that's enough of an answer to be like, start, start TRT or start HRT. That right there even isn't enough. That isn't enough. You need more than that. You need confluence. You need confirmations. You need more than one confirmation to do something. Okay. So I appreciate you guys listening. Hope you guys learned something from that. Riley Palfi, 18 years old. You guys already know I'm fucking dude. I'm sweating so hard right now because I was literally speaking just out of pure passion there. So like I said, guys, I hope you guys appreciated this video. Hope you guys actually learned something from this and don't resort to stupid shit. Okay. Listen to people who know more than you do your research. Uh, if you guys need reference points, man, my biggest reference, my biggest reference point is DerekMorePlaceMoreDates.com. So if you guys want to go there and check out his shit, obviously I'll leave the link in the bio down below or whatever. But seriously, I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your days to listen to me talk. And even though there's going to be a lot of negative opinions, like I already know this, I already know there's going to be because in my daily day-to-day -day life, like that's just, that's how it is, man. And I, I can't do anything to stop that shit. I can't stop you guys from having your own opinions and shit. So spew it. I don't care. The comment section is there for you for a reason. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Hope you guys enjoy the journey to pro and I'm not stopping. Nothing's going to stop me. You guys are not going to stop me. You guys are only going to inspire me to do even better. So I appreciate you guys. Love y'all and hope you guys have a good rest of your day. All right. Peace.